just let me uh, introduce? Uh, yes, please. Safe Harbor is all about. So we'll just go forward. Uh, brief history of MySQL, founded in 1995, acquired by Sun, uh, most popular open source database. And uh, this, yeah, last year now, is exciting because now we are on the Oracle Cloud. I think that's something that we are proud about. And it has taken some thinking and some time uh, to get it on the cloud. <coughs> Again, it's a, why do we call it so popular? 15 million installations, 80,000 downloads per day. And that's what when I go to my engineers and I say, you know, you make a mistake, it's going to be known to 80,000 people every day. So be careful what you do, how you work, and they have to be very, very careful. Uh, top ISPs use it. It's the number one database on the cloud. We have offered a MySQL on the cloud very recently, but it's, it's there on AWS, it's there on Microsoft, it's there on all kinds of... Google Cloud, all kinds of clouds have it, and people are using it quite, quite a bit. Uh, it's integrated with Hadoop, uh, and uh, you know, if you look at Facebook, we have got 35% of 175,000 fans, 28,000 followers on Twitter. You know, if you look at our popularity, it's rising, and we've been given awards on all kinds of things. And it's not, it's not that you know, it's used for something. Because sometimes people, I don't know, now you guys might might be knowing. But some people think that you know it's a small database. It's not a small database. It's used for very very serious things, like uh, when we look at uh, you know 2.2 billion users with 630 million websites using it. It's really serious database. 40% uh, data per growth and 40 million tweets. But it's, this is the whole scenario of, of of where we are at. And being the most popular in that scenario is something that MySQL uh, you know is is looking at. Who all uses uses us? Facebook, Uber, Airbnb, Box, Best Buy, Dropbox, Sears, you name it. Any large database, uh, any large website today is using MySQL. Again, and 
you know, whether it is OEMs, whether it is, you know, web services, you know, large database companies, I mean, large, large uh, web uh, companies, uh, web and enterprise, <coughs> cloud, OEM ICs, all of them are really looking at MySQL and using that as a core. And they are, they are using MySQL for really serious things. They are not using it for something simple. Two billion events per day for bookings.com. It's an active collaboration partner for us. So they work with us. We give them our, you know, whenever we make something new, we give it to booking.com. They try, try it out. They help us and, and we kind of move forward with them. Uh, same for Facebook, 1.6 billion active users. That's another company that works very really closely with us. It's not the only database that they use, but this is one of the core databases that they do have. Okay, and then PayPal, 100 terabyte of user data, Candy Crush games, all kinds of you know people are, are using uh, this thing. The top one is also interesting. Uh, the ID is processed for by one billion. This is actually uh, government of India has a unique program, and that is for giving everybody an ID, and that ID is linked with your fingerprints and the iris scans. And there are one billion people already scanned, uh, and we are up with that program. I, in fact. Because I'm a citizen of India, I carry that card with me too. <coughs> and you know, this is a DB engines ranking. I, I don't know how many of you are aware of it. They look at the popularity of the database based on the number of jobs that are there uh, for this, the number of times it has been quoted in different you know websites and different other places. They have their own metrics, and then they give a score. So if you look at you know the databases out there, uh, you know. We are we are out there and we are we are rising. So this is I think a, a two, 200 2015 uh, date. So Oracle is right on top with 1466.95. We are very close with 1278. Uh, then the MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL Server is there at 1100. And then if you see the popularity really drops. So these are databases that are coming up. But as far as, as as far as today is concerned, the popularity of MySQL is still extremely high. Uh, so, why should you choose MySQL? What should, why should you think about MySQL? We we have the expertise, resources, innovation roadmap, and we have Oracle Cloud. I will talk about these things in detail uh, a little bit more as we go. And you know whether whether it is performance, scalability, manageability, reliability, security, and flexibility on all the counts MySQL delivers. Right? So if you can, if you have any questions, you want to talk about any of these things as far as a database is concerned, we can tell you that we deliver. Okay? Um, and you know, the, there, is, there is something that is in our mind when we are creating MySQL. What is that it is there? One is that it has to be a scalable foundation. It has to be something that just you know, if you want to use it for one, it works for one. If you want to use it for 20, it use, you can use it for 20. If you want to have a thousand, you know, uh, uh, databases that you want to manage together, it should, it should work, right? And then it has to be, it has to be hybrid, right? Whether it is, uh, whether it is RDBMS, whether it is a doc store, whether it is SQL, whether it is a NoSQL, 5.7 needs to deliver on all of them. And then it has to, you know, save time and effort. So it has to be easy to administer. So, and finally, you know, it has to be secure. Oracle, one of the core tenets of Oracle has always been that, that whatever you deliver to our customers has to be extremely secure. So these are the four legs on which, you know, our development stands. We have to be scalable. If you are growing, if you are having larger, if you want to have multiple databases, we should be able to work on that. If you have a bigger machine on which you want to install it, it should work. You know, it should be easy to administer. It should not be, a, you know, behind polymer so that you cannot do. It has to be extremely secure. And now, the today's world, you know, we cannot say you must give schema. You must have only SQL. So that's the kind of thing that uh, is also there. Okay. And when we talk about, you know, S, um, SQL and no SQL, both of them have to be rock solid. It cannot be, a, you know, a temporary kind of solution, just a hack to work things around. It's a really, really well implemented thing. It's a core of the server where we have implemented the JSON. You know, the, the support is well indexed, okay, well managed, and obviously we look for feedback, but it has to be very, very strong. So complex joins and queries, you know, all those things are already there in, in RDBMS. But it has to be flexible, it has to be schema-less, so all those things should 
should should work and there should be no trade off when we talk about it and at the end even the json is stored in asset database so you don't have to worry if your data if your you know this is not you know ultimately it will be asset is not ultimately asset it is asset right from the beginning and this is something that we we, we call secure by default so the moment you install mysql it is secure you know it's not that you install it and after you know you have to do something so if there are two options when you are doing an installation and one is more secure than the other then automatically we will do it in of the way that it is more secure so no no you know automatic passwords you must give passwords you know your expiry schedules of the passwords will be there i think hari is here hari is going to talk about you know what are the practices by default which make mysql <coughs> secure and if there are any more things that you need to do to make sure that you know those things uh, are, are still taken care of right obviously if you want more security then we have an enterprise version which gives you that but i will not talk about it this is possession uh, okay and this is one of the new things that we have implemented it's called transparent data encryption it is a encryption at the level of the nodb engine so at the core of the nodb each of the pages is just you know encrypted right there and uh, the key is 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 also kind of you know kept somewhere which which is not if you want to have more and more security you can obviously keep it in the rfp keyword but again that's that's a enterprise feature but each of the, you can imagine so if somebody even gets hold of your complete database all the pages they cannot see anything in that because all the pages are kept secure so you don't have to, to worry about your pages so that's the new thing which we got transparent and as, as far as you are concerned as far as the user is concerned the the operations are seamless if they just go over and they they just get a hold of uh, you know their data as as a normal database the other new thing that we talk about is mysql group replication this is also a base for our uh, inodb cluster which i'll talk about in a bit so this is an active active circle of of a uh, ring of of uh, data servers that are broadcasting their information and the the data gets to multiple servers at once and there is some kind of a bus in the middle and you are even the data base that is uh, you know starting with uh, with with the transaction even that is reading the information from the same bus so it's an active active update everywhere it's a distributed fault tolerance because it is broadcast and all the servers know exactly what is happening even if one server goes down it doesn't really matter the second one is just right there up to date so you don't have to bother right and uh, it it gets automatically reconfigured so if there is a if there is a master you know signal master or something like that because you can set up that so there is one master and then the other guys are actually so you write only on one so if that there's only one write only slave and then a, a one one write only server and there are others who are just read and the, the one you writing on goes down then there is another server that this one take up so uh, there is automatic reconfiguration and automatic configuration and this is this is something that is uh, That is what you are showing in the slide. It's not a group replication. This is a in the big cluster. Uh, this, yeah. So, so, so the whole solution is like that. I'll, I'll come to the details. Okay. Either. But, uh, but the conflict resolution, that part is definitely there. In, in, is this needs to happen right at the group replication level? Yes. But uh, let me ask you uh, um, in the big cluster. Yeah, the failure has been. Group replication, but it's not GIS. Yes, it is not. It's there. It's it's an RC now. Okay, MySQL 8. This is the new upcoming release. It's going to come uh, very very soon. Again, I can't give any dates, but uh, yeah, we are we are uh, very very close to uh, the end of that. So the first thing that you know, when we are here in any of the Asian countries, what they worry about is UTF. uh they want to have all different kind of collisions with all different kind of languages uh we have support for unicode 9 that's something that's coming for uh you know in in mysql 8 uh so that's and utf8 mb4 is going to be the default character set that's something that should be interesting for all all the chinese japanese all those kind of things and uh you know we are we are, we are making sure that it's by default across the board uh, it, it is supported because there are i mean each of these uh, strings and everything in internally has to change to be able to get it okay then we've got uh, you know common common table ex uh, expressions so basically there is a query that you can put in the where and then the, and then it automatically and it's 
this is really, really fast now because earlier with sub queries there was a very, very, it was a bit difficult. We had these temporary tables and there are all kind of difficult things. Now that these common table expressions are there, they are supported extremely fast and they are very internal. So uh, if you want to write us, you select from, you know, you, you want to create a sub query and then you want to do selections on it, you want to use it as where or whatever you can use that. Uh, then there is something called invisible indexes. Now, a lot of people say, if I, you know, if, uh, I don't want an index enabled by default, right? I want to look at it, I want to use it, and then I want to enable it. But building the indexes takes such a long time that I don't want to build it and then immediately, you know, the, the, the optimizer knows about it. So this is an invisible index. It's created, uh, you know, it is kind of as disabled index. You, you create the index, you see if it is useful, if it is not useful, you drop it. Uh, secondly, you can also, uh, you have an index, you make it invisible and then you'll use, you know, if somebody cries and screams, because uh, then you, you, you drop, uh, you don't drop it, you still let it be. If, if nobody cries and screams, if nobody is using that index, then you can drop that. So those kind of things are possible with these, uh, with these, uh, uh, you know, invisible indexes. You call it soft delete and stage mode also, basically it's the we're talking about. A huge amount of work has gone into security roles, right? So, uh, you can you assign a role to a role? Can you assign multiple people to a role? You know that whole security roles business that we are giving this role can 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 they be embedded? Can there be trees of roles? All those things are there in in our our new roles. I expect that Hari we will talk about it a bit. I guess so. You can actually uh, uh, you create. So this is now very very well managed and extremely well implemented in my skill eight. That is what we're looking at. Uh, then there is native, native data dictionary. So data dictionary is information about the tables in the database, right? So earlier we used to have FRM files, right, where we had the information about a table. And imagine writing if uh, if if two people are changing the the you know adding a column into a database and there's two different columns, two people are changing a file at the same time. The concurrency, the management of that is very very difficult. So, and the atomicity. Now we have, this is a transactional data dictionary. If you want to learn more about it, we have Gopal who's going to talk about it. He's going to go into details of this, right? And the metadata cross-platform. I mean, this, it, I think this was one of the major issues that we had with MySQL, that at the core, we did not have a data dictionary which was completely transactional. Now it is completely transactions. And uh, there is a few, I think there are 200 or 300 bugs that we just resolved by implementing this because of the number of problems we used to have in managing files. Uh, then uh, we've got, uh, you know, uh, this performance schema, uh, performance of information schema, this is something that our customers had been crying about a lot, that if you inquire uh, information about tables, it was very, very slow. It has become extremely fast now. And, uh, you know, in different levels of information schema, where you have to count all the schemas, if you want to aggregate schemas, sizes, if you want to have dynamic table information, if you want to count all indexes, all these things have been have become very fast because of the fact that the information schema has become very, very fast. Uh, again, performance schema indexes uh, also is is added because performance schema has already always been there but never had we didn't have too much indexation on it. So even those are indexed and 150 indexes are there. So your search in an information, uh, in the performance schema becomes way faster. I think Mayank is going to talk about it uh, in the next sessions. Uh, and again, again, the sys schema is basically, sys schema is a schema of all the schemas, so uh, of performance schema. So what are my fastest, what are my slowest tables? What are my largest tables? There's a bunch of information that you can just get from your performance schema, right? And those metrics, and now, uh, uh, this, this, the query time in, of inquiring that has become extremely fast. So, so lots and lots of things, and uh, we are we are, we are better doc we have documentation with oxygen. We, we have a new plugin infrastructure. So in fact, we are moving towards a completely plugged in MySQL at one time. Again, I'm not promising a date, but we want to have a time when you know everything is plugged in, and. We are now moving that if you create your own plugin, you can actually plug it in and you can you know, enhance MySQL. Uh, it could be a storage engine, it could be a you know something else that you want to add. There is a plugin infrastructure that you can talk to MySQL basics. GIS, I think we are still a long way to go. We are 
adding more and more stuff into GIS. Uh, then query hints is something that we're working about. Uh, scan query, anything that you want to ask me, you can ask, I can, I can tell you details. Blobs are better, memcached is better. Scalability, parser, document store, this is something that we continue, continue to work on. Uh, GTID purged is always settable, so these kind of uh, you know, things. So then what is the new thing? Is our new exciting thing is called the NLTP cluster. So this is a, this is like you know you are giving a cluster of NLTP nodes that is is configurable by us. It is managed by us, and it's it's at the core is the root replication as we said was saying. But you know we 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 give you the complete package. So we test it together. Uh, we it is completely flexible. It is easy to use, and it is uh, it is a scale out. There are some uh, numbers that we've, we've, we've done, but those are internal numbers. I, I don't want to go into details of those numbers. Uh, but those, uh, this sharding and everything is coming. So I will tell you the stages of, of this. Uh, so basically, there are there are four steps. So one is that you know, we simply say that, OK, we've got the document store. We've got a relational and document model. right? Then we say, OK, there is HA. HA means if there is one node that fails, the other node should take over. That is something that we've implemented in the, the RC now. Then we, we, we plan, plan to have a read scale out where again, each of these nodes is going to have you know, these, these uh, slaves so that the slave gets promoted to the, the group replication master. And so if there's one group replication master that fails, the slave becomes the master and the other slaves. So if, if I've got you know, three uh, masters in, in, in the group replication way, right? And each of these, Three have two slaves, right? If the if the master in the group replication fails, the slave should become the part of that thing. That should happen automatically. That is stage three, and then there is the whole uh, you know sharding business where the replication happens and uh, where is the yeah, where you know you the information about the way your database is sharded across is, is known to the database itself. A router knows. Okay, you are asking for this information. This information lies in you know. Uh, node number three and he goes to that node number three and gets the information automatically. That's the fourth stage that we are we are looking at. And this is the step two that we're talking about. As I said, okay, there is a there is a router and that just goes to the uh, the group replication circle and it gets the information. And the whole management of this this uh, MySQL uh, group as we say this can be done by MySQL shell. And it's a very very interesting shell that we have, it knows about, you, you want to add something, you want to delete something, you want to stop something, all those things can be done by the shell. It is programmable in multiple languages now, you can, you can it, it talks multiple protocols, it can talk in, in, in you know, different languages, if you want to talk JavaScript, it talks JavaScript, and there are multiple languages that it basically speaks. Uh, so that's, that's the kind of stage two that we're talking about. Stage three, is, as I said, is where you know, each of these masters is going to have its own slaves, which are read-only. And if if there is something that fails here, one slave should be able to take over as the master. That is the stage three. And obviously, then once the stage three is gone, then we've got these these shard one and shard two and shard three. And these routers should know based on the information about this whole cluster where the information lies, and they should be able to route you to the right uh, shard based on the query that you have. So that's the, the plan uh, going forward. Okay, and yeah, so this is the this is the whole you know work. You should be able to uh, your application using a MySQL connector should connect to the cluster, and all the information on where it has to be routed, what where information lies, the automatic scaling, everything should be done from there. And there should be a single shell which can talk in multiple languages using which you can actually manage this thing. And if the monitoring of it has to be done, that can be done using the enterprise monitor, which is already uh, there. So can I interrupt? Yes. Just clarify, right? Is this the carry grid? Sorry? Is this the carry grid? No, this is not the carry grid. So we are not talking about the carry grid. So this is a new this one? This is the new one. This uh, is the new one. This is the InnoDB cluster. Is it GA? Uh, it's an RC now. So we have stage one that is already there, and the stage two is this. Uh, so that's what I said. Yeah. So here is, is is the first part where we have the document model where we started supporting the JSON, right? That was the stage one, and we had the group replication that was that's already there. Uh, as far as 
high availability is concerned, we have just implemented it. It's an RC. It is going to be GA very, very soon. And then the read scale out where I said the nodes are talking to each other, yes. So that's the next one and the final one is the right scale. So this is a sharded database. Yes. It's not yet a sharded database. The click checks are here. That, that, that is planned. And uh, it is different from the multi-master group rep replication that you showed just now? No, the group replication is, is a part, this is a part of the group replication. Then we have something which is, which is called our MySQL cluster product. It is different. So InnoDB cluster and MySQL cluster are kind of different. Uh, but with this, with this only, this InnoDB cluster within the uh, enterprise only? No. That's exactly the idea. This, it's, it's not going to be enterprise. So anything that I'm talking about here today, and I will act, you know, absolutely if there is something that is not free in open source, I will talk about it. So as, you know, as far as our group replication is concerned, it is not enterprise, it's free in open source. As far as this X shell is concerned, uh, again, this is again free in open source. As far as the router is concerned, again, free in open source. There's nothing that we are going to do enterprise in this whole setup. If there is an added security layer that goes on top somewhere, maybe you know, we, don't have, we haven't had a plan for it yet. But as far as this whole architecture that I'm showing you, this one, uh, this one, which is the level three, where I say, okay, if, if this one fails over, it becomes uh, one of the masters, and it becomes a part of the HRA. Again, it's going to be free and open source. Uh, with the multi shards, when it comes, whenever it comes, is again going to be free and open source. So I presume it's going to be part of eight or something. Maybe nine or something. Because okay. again, remember, I talked about the pluggable infrastructure. So these are all basically components that we are plugging in one after the other. Right. So they can be, I mean, you know, as far as we are concerned, they can be added at, at a later time. The moment they are stable, we could just release, for example, a sharding, sharded, uh, you know, DB cluster sharding. That could be done. Yes. I have a question. What layer you have to define the shard keys on the application layer or on the DB layer? Or on, the on the DB. So this is the information is, is going to reside here in the MySQL router. That is the plan going forward. And remember, our MySQL connectors that we are now creating, they are also aware that there is a cluster. So there could be some information, part of that information that goes into the connector itself. There could be part of it that goes into the connector. Again, this is <coughs> still being implemented. As well. Is it still in the RC? The so we are we are right now here. Uh, sorry, we are here. Yeah. This is RC. This is RC. This is RC. Oh. This is is uh, some time away. Oh. Yeah, I can't. Again, as I said, Wait, no dates. Part of eight of uh, means MySQL eight or five point seven means some order of five point seven. There could be parts of it that could be in five point seven. So, for example, group replication I think is also there in five point seven. This is five seven seventeen and later. Five seven seventeen is the exact number. Okay. It is there in that five seven seven. I think sixteen is out. The current version is sixteen. Uh, Same thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now that's the new thing. Uh, again, I don't know how cloud is. Is it open source? Not open source? It's a bit fuzzy in the lines because everybody pays for the cloud and. Uh, but well, the good thing about is is is, is uh, about the MySQL on the Oracle cloud is that we give the enterprise version on the cloud. So if if you are using any anywhere else on the cloud, you will not get you know man you the, the enterprise monitor. You will not get the enterprise backup. You know I don't know how much you need it because again. But the fact is that you know at least all those enterprise firewalls, everything that is there available in our enterprise package is a part of our MySQL cloud uh, on Oracle. So if you have to, if you go for Oracle cloud, yes, yes. Can we create um, any slaves and all these things? Everything can be. Everything can be. So you get that. So it's, if you, I mean, so that's, like, it's just, just about, I think, six or seven months old. The implementations are coming. My request would be just try it out. The cloud is new. The, you know, Oracle cloud, I think they have, Two months or three months that you want to do, you want to try something out, you can try it out. Download it or basically link to it. Now there's no download in the cloud, right? So you try it, use it if you think that it is valuable, and again you will get the feel of the the tools that we have on the enterprise or on the cloud. So the tooling might look a bit different. Uh, you can you can look at that. Is is it a managed service? 
Yes, it's a completely managed service. So, so for example, backup is automatically taken. We don't even con need to configure it. It's automatically taken. They give you that, you know, every week we are going to do a full backup. Every day we are going to do an incremental backup. They will do it automatically. For you. You, will need, you don't need to do anything at all. What about HA? Is it presumed to be HA? Uh, so cloud inherently is highly available, <coughs> right? Uh, but uh, but if you want to set up, see, the, what it does is is uh, the HA is, is there's no HA managed service yet, so you need to configure your own HA. Right. So we are giving you you can look at it as a pass as a SaaS whatever the whole machine kind of is yours. It's your virtual machine. Just like you install it on a normal machine, you install MySQL. The the management that it gives you is that if you want to do the monitoring of it, the enterprise monitor is there. So all those lovely screens that are there, the query analysis, all those things are given to you. And if you want to do HA, you can do it on a virtual machine exactly the same way that you same way that you, you do a normal one. So how, how does it work? I can set up slaves and then I feel over to the slaves? Yes, you can do that. You can do that. Just like you know, you take you you just like you take two machines, you make a master on one, a slave on one. Here you've got two virtual machines, you connect them as a master and slave, but it works. If you want to make twenty machines in a master slave setup, you can do that. I mean everything is exactly the way you have it on a physical computer. The only difference is that it's not a physical computer, it's a you know, it's a it's a virtual computer. It's a virtual machine. Again. You know everything security it's, and, and Oracle Cloud itself. Again, as I said, one of our tenets of the Oracle, anything we implement, it's extremely, extremely secure. So I was just recently talking to a guy who basically, you know, is a security expert, and then he said we came up with a security application that automatically analyzes all the packets, and if there is any suspicious activity, they can actually detect what is happening. And one of the opportunities for, was, for Oracle was that we, you know, can we sell this as a product? And Oracle said, no, we don't want to sell it as a product. We don't. We want just to make our cloud more secure. So they are at a stage where if somebody injects something into Oracle Cloud in a steady state, they know that something can, something is going on. Somebody is trying to hack. So we have got hacking companies that have tried it. So I mean, Oracle Cloud is really, really secure for us. That is one of the big focuses of having, you know, the cloud. Uh, again, as I said, scalability and availability, uh, and because it's MySQL Enterprise, you will get support from us, which is the you know, MySQL folks. Uh, Oracle environment is there; it's hybrid cloud and on-premise. This is the, this is another promise of MySQL. Uh, sorry, Oracle Cloud. If you want to work on the cloud, fine; it should work exactly the same way. If you want to put it on a machine, it should work exactly the same way. In fact, I, I think they have also now a program where somebody says, you know, I want to have my cloud in my data center. They say, okay, here is an Oracle machine. You keep your machine in your data center. We will manage it, and it's going to look like an Oracle cloud. So that's also possible, right? And yeah, these are all you know marketing things where they say, no TC, you have to calculate on your own. Uh, clouds are in, in I mean, in the end, clouds are expensive. So you should not. You have to do your own analysis. Okay. So that's the last slide of my session, which is what else is there. We've got optimizer features, we've got security features, transactional data dictionary. You know, in the in the middle that we're talking about, you've got a Docker workshop. I put your presentation up there also. Uh, performance tuning, uh, performance schema. This is one of the more sought after things where you want to tune your the information so that is there. Uh, the, the generated virtual columns. This is something that you know. A lot of the new features are based on where we are doing the JSON indexing. It's basically based on this uh, virtual columns that we create. So you can create a virtual column and you can do indexing that. Uh, again, if you want to know about pure JSON support, uh, again, on, and a lot of things on replication. There are a lot of people interested in replication. So what is new, what is new group replication, and what is the latest development. So here is how you want to do a setup. Here is what is there in group replication, what all is there, what all is planned. And here, you know, what complete currently has been. And that's all from me. Uh, I've taken a bit over time. Any questions? Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you.